Hello and welcome to another episode of my F1 22 driver career mode here today for this Belgian Grand Prix after the summer break from last time at the Austrian Grand Prix when we had our first spring race but into Belgium now and there was rain predicted right at the start of quality and so we're only really going to get this one flying lap in and as we started the lap it did start to rain about halfway around the lap but of course Spa such a big track and as we come to the end of the lap you can see the track is absolutely soaked and I really struggled just to keep the car in a straight line from the start of the lap to the end of the lap two totally different racetracks but we signed the pits I didn't think there was much point going back out because I didn't think the track, the track was going to get worse but those on the inters actually managed to set quicker times than those on the softs at the start of the session but let's go to the race with a mixed up grid the phenomenal debut of a young Michael Schumacher. There's always something special just around one of the many corners of this fan favourite circuit. Spa Francorchamps then is a historic 19 corner circuit with a lap distance of 4.35 miles. There's over 100 metres of elevation change here and with long stretches of the lap spent flat out, a good top speed will be vital for success. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position. A very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Magnussen, Stroll, Daniel Ricciardo, and Leclerc. Fernando Alonso, Hamilton, Norris, and Sergio Perez. Bottas, Mick Schumacher, George Russell, and Vettel. Brown, Latifi, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Guan Yu Zhou and Pierre Gasly. Sonoda and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. With the Grand Prix nearly upon us, Anthony Davidson is by my side once again to offer his perspective. Now let's talk about Charles Leclerc. That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. So it's a one stop, very much so grid, and Stroll and Madsen on the second row, as it's lights out and away we go here at Spa we've already had more action than we did last year in terms of real life and now we're going to send it down inside of several cars into turn one and now as we head down towards our rouge what can we do through our rouge we go on the back now of Lando Norris and we're still there on Lando Norris and now are we going to send it to the inside there is Drew, um, Hamilton just off the road and we're going to send it down the inside of both of them and that's starting P15 we are up now into P8 as next up the road is Daniel Ricciardo into though this long long right hander we have found some beautiful traction and we have Dan Daniel Ricciardo round the outside there and now on to the back of our teammate Fernando tried to do the same move but we ran a bit too wide that time and this is really the first time that we've really fought with Fernando apart from that race at Imola um, Miami when we let him through but this was the first first race as you can see we've gained nine positions in the first couple of laps as we were following Stroll and on lap four we finally get the job done but this was the first race of the season 
but I truly felt like I had confidence with the car. The car was doing what I wanted it to do. And I just felt this Martin Brando would put it at one with the car. And I feel like this was our strongest performance. As down the inside goes Fernando on a large stroll. Sell out a lot. But unfortunately, Fernando's engine has gone bang. And our reliability this season has been absolutely shocking. According to the R&D, we have one of the best reliabilities. How the game's working that one out, I don't know. As now we are battling Magnussen and we've gone off the track there. And now, going off the track in a way has given us a great run. Magnussen goes wide, we, we ride the kerb and we overtake the Danish driver. But now, going into Piron, he's coming up on the back of us, he's going to the outside. We're going to squeeze him to the outside as much as possible. There's contact, surely there. Magnuson on the inside, we shut the door. And now, these lock are qualifying, so Hamilton, Barrett and George just completely caught out and they've had to make their way back through the order, but they're sticking the DRS train beyond the McLarens. Is now was looking like a very healthy result for these two. Stroll not been that good. Really surprises Kevin Magnussen. His engine has gone bang and he was on for his best result. Well, it must have been his best result of the season, at least since Australia round one. And for the second weekend in a row, because he retired in the sprint. Magnuson's engine has gone bang and unfortunately for Alex Albon he's got a puncture and that's for the third race in a row where one of the AI has got a puncture because it was Perez in Silverstone it was Stroll last time out in Austria Alex Albon here but as we pit on lap 11 to make our winning only stop onto the hard tyres. As was mentioned earlier, we had some great pace and we pulled massively away from Stroll. That really gave us, gave me the confidence in a way to get after and just kind of manage the pace and get hopefully our best result of the season is into the pit with George, you can see Hamilton has gained some places as well. George comes out, has he beat out the McLarens? He has, but I think he was already ahead of as though. Skipping on, we are, Lewis Hamilton's got his way through. As I mentioned earlier, we were pulling on Stroll behind us. George comes out behind. Daniel Ricciardo and Perez has dropped back beyond the Alfa Romeo as here is George gets a pass large stroll but in terms of me and Lewis I was keeping the gap to Hamilton the gap was staying around four and a half seconds and I was expecting him to eat me up and have me on toast as Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen go wheel to wheel through the chicane and Charles Leclerc takes the lead at Grand Prix after a bit of a poor start from the Monacast. But this is us now, just managing the pace, looking at our best result of the season and I had a lot of Canada flashbacks because we were on for a great result in Canada and then the engine went bang and that's all I could think about but eventually that Mercedes engine did catch up with me and you can see here Hamilton has got on the back of us, we've been chilling in P4 but 
basically the entire race since we got past Magnussen but we go wide off the track and Lewis Hamilton goes down our inside and takes P4 so now we look behind two laps ago you see the gap to George can he catch us but it's going to be another win for Charles Leclerc and he is on a bit of a run now at the minute and I think that's his third win in a row Verstappen second Sainz is third Hamilton fourth and we do hold on to P5 and beat George Russell Alright, race over, take care of the car on the way in What a great race then, and a magnificent victory here at the Belgian Grand Prix. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on track was, speed. I know it sounds like an awfully reductive statement, but fast cars win races, and we saw that today with our winner. at the podium you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe a world-class win for a world-class team Ferrari do it again So that's been the Belgian Grand Prix, probably one of the most less dramatic races of the season. But that's our best result of the season. We had our best result last time out in Austria in P8, but we've gone three better here. But fortunately, Fernando retired, and that also was at the back of my mind in this race, as well as the issues we've had in Baku and Canada. Especially in Canada, to be was on for one of the best results of the season there. So, you see here, the constructors, we are still battling best of the rest, but that's been this video. Hope you enjoyed the Belgium Grand Prix for this career mode for season one in the Alpine. Next up, we head to Zandvoort, Verstappen's home Grand Prix. Essentially, had three in a row with Austria and Spa but we head to Zandvoort next hopefully we can build on this result and I'll see you then goodbye